In this video, I will be discussing the organic nitrogen compounds, which is topic 18 in Edexcel IAL Chemistry. So this is going to be part one of topic 18, um, and I will be looking at amines more. And, I, and in part two, I'm going to look at amides, amides, and polymers, okay? All right, let's start off. So we're gonna look at the reactions with primary amines first. So I have this example, which is mentioned in the syllabus, butyl amine. Um, and so the butyl amine, when it reacts with water, um, we get this ionic form with a hydroxide ion. So what happened? So the nitrogen has donated a lone pair. So this nitrogen actually has a lone pair and it accepts a proton from the water, okay? Leaving a hydroxide ion. So that is going to lead to the increase in pH. So we know that primary amines are basic, okay? So they're basic. And now that we know that they are basic, we're going to react it with hydrochloric acid. So let's see if a neutralization reaction occurs. So yeah, we get this salt. So a neutralization um, reaction occurred, right? So we um, basically the lone pair on the nitrogen has been donated to get the H plus, and that forms the chloride ion, and therefore you get the ionic bonding over here. So you get a salt. And now let's look at the uh, primary amines reacting with a primary halogenoalkane. Um, so this is a meth uh, chloromethane reacting with butyl amine. Basically, uh, the H and Cl is being removed and we're going to get a secondary amine that looks like this. So we have the butyl group here and the methyl group over here, right? Um, so uh, afterwards, we have the ethanoyl chloride um, this is not a halogen alkane, right? Because you can see that there is a carbon uh, double bond O over here, um, and we have that um, Cl. This is an acyl chloride, right? So uh, basically, a condensation reaction occurs, removing the HCl molecule, and you get an N butyl ethanamide. So um, this naming system, um, it's a nomenclature for amides, but I'm not. I'm not, I don't think it's in the syllabus that is mentioned that you need to know how to name amides, but uh, yeah, it's just the N is bonded to the butyl group, so that's N-butyl, and then ethan amide would be the group ethan, one, two carbons, uh, that has the carbon double bond O, okay? So anyways, yeah, primary amine and acyl chloride, you get an amide bond over here. Um, now we're going to look at the um, metal ions reacting with butylamine. Over here we have copper 2+. Plus, okay, so actually this uh, process has two steps. So first of all, it, um, I just want to mention that it looks very, very similar to copper sulfate aqueous um, reacting with ammonia solution. Okay, so we're going to first of all start with obviously the copper uh, aqueous ions uh, surrounded by water ligands which is a pale blue solution, right? Um, so it's going to react with two uh, molecules of butyl amine, first of all, and a deprotonation reaction occurs first. So we're going to get a blue precipitate, okay? This is now a precipitate reaction that we've looked at in transition metals, right? Um, and we're going to get, obviously, this um, ionic form because it has accepted protons. And now, Blue precipitate, the blue precipitate over here is going to react with two more butyl amine and give a deep blue solution. So over here we have two ligands of um, butyl amine and two water ligands. Um, and we have the two, oh, this has to be four, has to be four, uh, four water ligands and four hydroxide ions have been removed, okay? So, no, actually, that has to be two because we have two over here, sorry. <laughs> yeah, two, and two is removed. Two is in the um, complex still. So, yeah, a ligand exchange occurred. So the coordination number also changed, right? Because we have six ligands bonded to copper tubules over here, but over here we have 
four uh, ligands on the copper tubeless. So I have four over here because butyl amine is a very large structure, right? It's very bulky. The alkyl chain is long. So um, around the copper ion, it makes sense that only two of these uh, fit in there and then with um, two water ligands, okay? So we have four um, surrounding the copper ion. So if this becomes, if the amine becomes a little bit more bulkier, it might be that um, you cannot fit um, more than two or you know, more than two with other ligands, okay? So that is a ligand exchange accompanying um, coordination number changing, okay? So you can watch Transition Metals 4 uh, when it's up. I don't think it's, I mean, right now it's not up, but it will be up. So watch Transition Metals 4 so that you can uh, remind yourself of deprotonation and what ligand exchange and coordination number changing is, okay? Um, so we're going to now look at the reactions with aromatic amines, not primary uh, aliphatic amines. So aromatic means that it has rings. Aliphatic means it just has an alkyl chain without a ring. Okay, so we have a phenyl amine. So this molecule over here, a benzene ring with an amine group that is called a phenyl amine. Okay, when this reacts with water, Basically, the same thing happens. Um, it's going to, the lone pair is going to be donated to accept a proton from the water and form an NH3 plus structure. And we're going to get an OH minus ion, hydroxide ion. So it's going to result in a basic solution. So phenylamine, again, is uh, still basic. So obviously, if we react it with an acid, a neutralization occur, uh, neutralization reaction occurs and we're going to get a salt. Okay, and we have if we have ethanoyl chloride, then um, again an amide bond is going to form by removing one H from the uh, NH2 and one Cl from the acyl uh, chloride group, and yeah, the amide bond has formed. Um, and yeah, you don't have to know how to name it, but it's N phenol because on the end we have the phenol group, uh, ethan amide because we have used the ethanol chloride. Okay, so yeah, amide bond forming because of uh, ethanol chloride and the amine group on the phenol amine. Um, whoops, that is the end. To continue, we have the, um, that it Phenylamine, sorry, <laughs> phenylamine can also react with copper 2 plus and cause deprotonation as well, just like um, the butylamine, okay? And then it can act as ligands and cause ligand exchange when it, when it is in excess, okay? Um, but obviously, phenylamine is a very, very bulky um, ligand, so I don't think you can fit many in around the uh, copper 2 plus ion. But if there is a specific example, I'll bring it. But I didn't, I couldn't find the specific example of um, phenyl amine surrounding copper 2 plus. Okay, um, so amines are miscible, uh, which means that it's basically soluble in water because they can form hydrogen bonds with each other. With each other, I mean the water and the amines, okay? So yeah, this is just the variable group. Um, we have the amine group and it has the lone pair. Um, and the hydrogen and the oxygen over here, this is the water molecule. So we know that um, NOF, these, are the, these were the atoms, these are the elements um, that has to be bonded to hydrogen so that hydrogen bonding can form, right? So we have N that is being bonded to H and we have O and H in water so they can form hydrogen bonding with each other, okay? Um, this, uh, this hydrogen over here bonded to N is uh, partially positive enough, um, N is partially negative enough, oxygen is partially negative enough, and this hydrogen is also uh, partially positive enough to form um, hydrogen bonding, okay? There was a motorcycle passing by, sorry for that. Um, yeah, we're now going to compare the basicities from, I mean, between primary amines, ammonia, and phenyl amine, okay? So have a think about it um, for a second, pause the video, uh, think about the definition of, a, um, of the basicity, basically what makes it a base, and yeah, have a think about it.
after um, you pause the video. But I'm going to reveal the answer. So uh, the primary amine is the most basic. Uh, and ammonia is kind of like in the middle. And the phenol amine is the least basic. Okay, let's look at why. So first of all, basicity is the ability to donate a lone pair to accept a hydrogen ion, a proton, okay? So bases are proton acceptors, right? They do that by donating a lone pair. Um, so over here, when we have the primary amine, the alkyl group on the primary amine is electron donating. So the electrons can go like that to, towards the uh, amine group. So therefore, it makes a lone pair on the nitrogen more available to be donated. Okay, so therefore it's more basic than uh, ammonia, okay, because ammonia doesn't have anything, right? Um, now, if we look at the phenylamine, the lone pair on the N on the phenylamine is delocalized in the pi ring system. So, yes, it has the lone pair, but it's going to be delocalized with the ring, so um, making it more difficult for the lone pair to be donated. Okay, therefore it's going to be less basic than ammonia. Okay, I, um, I hope that was all clear. So now we're going to look at how we prepare uh, primary amine. So first of all, we have um, one going from a halogenyl alkane. So we have a um, chloropropane over here and we have um, propyl amine over here. So it was just converted using excess ethanolic ammonia solution and we need to heat this in a sealed tube. So it's basically under pressure. Okay, so these all these uh, reaction um, conditions are important. Excess ethanolic ammonia and heat in a sealed tube. Okay, so that is how we can form a primary amine. And that also, requ you, you're required to know the mechanism for that reaction. Um, that is from AS. I'm, I'm pretty sure if it was from AS. So um, we're gonna just do a quick revision on that. So the carbon over here that is bonded to chlorine is going to be partially positive because chlorine is more electronegative and it's going to um, attract the bonding pairs of the electrons. So. Um, yeah, we have the dipoles first of all, and when an ammonia molecule comes in, um, the lone pair is going to be donated towards the partially positive carbon. And so this bond over here, CCL bond, is going to break, okay? So that is going to give us a, an a NH3 plus structure over here. Um, and we have the chlorine chloride ion just in solution and another ammonia molecule is going to come along and accept the H plus from here so that we can make a neutral amine and we have the NH4 plus Cl minus ionic um, salt that is forming. Okay, so that is the full um, mechanism. The curly arrows, the three curly, curly arrows are very important. The lone pairs are very important. And the charges, the partial charges over here and the charge over here, they're very important. Okay, so the red marks, um, don't forget to write them. Okay. Um, so we're going to look at prim uh, preparing primary amines from nitriles. So if we have a propan nitrile over here, basically you can get a primary amine, um, a propyl amine again, uh, using reduction basically. So we have lithium aluminum hydride in dry ether that you can use. And you could also use hydrogen gas with nickel catalyst and you have to apply heat and pressure. Okay, so um, this uh, reaction reactants and conditions. This is the same for um, hydrogenation of alkenes. Okay, so alkenes can go to alkanes using this exact um, reagents and conditions. Okay, so yeah. Um, next, we're going to prepare aromatic amines. Um, so what we're going to start with is nitrobenzene, okay? With a nitrobenzene, um, we're going to use concentrated hydrochloric acid and tin as our catalyst, okay? So that is going to reduce uh, nitrobenzene into a phenylamine, okay? So that is also a re reduction reaction. Um, 
And we need to know, as our last organic reaction for this video, uh, making azo dyes. So first of all, you're going to need um, the phenylamine, and that should be inside a hydrochloric acid solution, okay? So, and you're going to basically add uh, sodium nitrate, NaNO2, um, also in HCl. So what this actually is going to make is the reactant that we actually need, okay? So it, when, they, when these two react, you're going to get NaCl, first of all, and HNO3, uh, HNO2, which is a nitrous acid, okay? So that is our reactant that we need to use in order to make uh, the intermediate molecule that we need to make azo dyes. So let's look at what happens. We're going to get a benzene diazonium chloride from this nitrous acid and the phenylamine reacting. So the overall reaction would be the phenylamine reacting with a nitrous acid, HCl, um, inside HCl, and you're gonna get the benzene diazonium chloride and two water molecules as um, the other waste products. So when this uh, benzene diazonium ion actually forms, this is very unstable, so we must follow it immediately with a coupling reaction, okay? So uh, we need to immediately drop this uh, benzene diazonium ion solution into a phenol and sodium hydroxide solution. Um, so inside that, we're going to have phenoxide, and over here we have uh, the diazonium ion, these are going to react to give this azo dye molecule, okay? So um, this carbon has uh, bonded to this nitrogen, okay? Um, yeah, so that is your azo dye. So you can use azo dyes to form um, paints and those kind of stuff. So uh, again, this is the summary page for the a making azo dyes because there are quite many steps and um, the reagents being made from other stuff and yeah. So I um, made it organized over here. So you have phenylamine, um, nitrous acid, which is produced from sodium nitrate and HCl. And these, these rea reactants should be in HCl, hydrochloric acid solution. Then you get a benzene diazonium chloride and two water molecules. And the ben uh, diazonium ion is going to react with the phenoxide ion that has been produced from phenol and sodium hydroxide. So you're going to get the azo dye structure. Okay, so that is it for uh, the amine section. And I'll see you in topic, uh, not topic two, part two of topic 18 in the next video.